This Easter Day scripture is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18, New Revised Standard Version. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings were lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. But yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head, the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she should not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be a gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God, your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Let us pray together. <laughs> O risen Christ, open us to the power of your resurrection as we hear it proclaimed anew this day, that we too might rise to new life in you. Amen. <coughs> the resurrection is a shout of victory. It signifies that sin, evil and death will not have the final word. Christ is victorious. Christus victor is the Latin phrase. The resurrection is a dramatic sign of God's victory over the evil forces that conspired against Jesus and by extension all the forces of evil in the world. The power of Easter is hope. Hope for transformation. Hope for new life. For light for the world. Hope that death is not the end but the door to something better. Hope that the power of God's love will continue to pervade our world, undeterred by waves of death or destruction. In the words of writer and theologian Frederick Bigner, resurrection means that the worst thing is never the last thing. We've come here today because we know that Christ is risen. But on that first Easter morning, no one knew that Christ had risen. Jesus' disciples and friends were in the depths of despair, fear and guilt. The world seemed dark and hope was nowhere to be found. Christ had risen, but they had to discover it for themselves so that they could say, I've seen the Lord, and experience for themselves the light that pierces the darkness and a new and transformed life. Our scripture this morning featured three people, and in the next two weeks we will hear about a few others. 
Mary Magdalene was a Jewish woman from the village of Magdala on the shore of Lake Galilee. She was a follower of Jesus. She'd been following him the whole time. And she was present at the crucifixion and at the tomb. There are other Marys mentioned in the Gospels and some other named, unnamed women. And although there is speculation, it's unclear whether any of those Marys or those women were Mary Magdalene. But we do know that Mary Magdalene was the first to the tomb. And she found that the stone had been rolled away. She didn't see Jesus. She assumed that the grave robbers had stolen Jesus' body. Mary ran to tell Peter and another disciple, beloved disciple. And they raced back to the tomb. We're not sure who the beloved disciple was. It might have been the Gospel writer John, although most scholars nowadays think that that's unlikely. But the beloved disciple races Peter to the tomb and beats Peter there and sees the empty tombs. <coughs> the empty tomb and the linens lying there and instantly believes without full comprehension or an explanation of what it all means. Peter arrives next. He looks and goes in but leaves uncertain as to what has happened. Only Mary remains. And it's not until the gardener calls her by name that she recognizes the risen Jesus and is able to say, I've seen the Lord. In each of these, we find ourselves at one time or another, one who sees and believes, one who sees and leaves uncertain, a one who makes assumptions and perhaps initially runs away and then returns and searches and <coughs> needs to hear their own name called. Christ is risen whether we recognize it or not. There's so much before our very eyes that we miss. We make the wrong assumptions. The good news is that Christ will continue to search for us and call us by name until we are able to respond. I have seen the Lord. I know that I have seen the Lord here. I've seen him as you surround those who are sick. As you walk with those newly out of the closet. As you embrace in our midst those with special needs as you welcome the stranger, as you generously give to causes that touch our hearts, as you write letters, sign petitions, join in protest marches, and advocate for social justice. I see him here each time a mom comes to pick up diapers, and each time one of you drops off food, or prepares a meal for a hospitality house, or interfaith food ministry, or Habitat for Humanity. I feel his presence with me when I hurt, or I'm fearful for the future. I see him when my mind is open to transformation where I see the ways that I've participated in things like racism or homophobia, and I am transformed into a new person with changed views. And when I experience grace and forgiveness, the risen Christ is here this morning with us, and he'll be here next week too. Open your eyes. And listen carefully, because I know he's calling your name too. When I had this sermon finished writing yesterday as I finished it, I started to clear up my desk. And way beneath everything else on my desk, I came across this cross. 
written on this cross is this. I have called you by name. You are mine. I've called you by name. I see there is a Lord. Have you? Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray. God of resurrections, open our eyes to your presence with us. Call us by name so that each one of us can say, I have seen the Lord. Fill us with your hope. Remind us again of the resurrection hope that light is ultimately stronger than darkness. Life is stronger than a tomb, and love is stronger than loss. And that in the end, Easter always triumphs.